Hey guys, it's Justin. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to furnish a Airbnb, especially those who are just starting off or just trying to understand a little bit more about what goes into furnishing your Airbnb. And before we do, I am feeling a little sick. So if I do sound a little nasally, just remember that I'm trying my best to get this out to you guys. So Hopefully you guys will forgive me for that, but let's go on to the video. Before we get into it, I wanna talk about the sponsor of this video, Aura. If you're like me and love saving money, you probably shared your Netflix password with your friends and family, and statistically, the average consumer has 90 accounts. It's most likely that you don't have 90 different passwords to go with each one. So if someone has one of your passwords, they probably have access to your other accounts. This can make you and your accounts extremely vulnerable to things like identity theft and fraud. And if you think that won't happen to you, just know that American consumers lost $56 billion from identity theft in 2020. And that's a lot of money. This is why I've partnered with the sponsor of this video, Aura. Aura is an identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined in one easy to use app that monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, your social security number, and quickly sends alerts right to your phone and email. I've dealt with fraud and I know with fraud, every second matters. I love Aura because it can connect my credit and bank account and notify me of any changes up to four times faster than Aura's other competitors. Aura's VPN allows me to stay anonymous online by keeping my browser history and personal info safe and encrypted. And the best part is that Aura's antivirus software will block malware and viruses before they infect devices. Aura found my personal information on dark web five times in the past two weeks. So stay safe and start your two week free trial today at aura.com slash just link. Once you sign up, don't forget to comment down below how many times your personal info was found. Back to the video. All right. So I'm going to talk about who I am and what my experience is on Airbnb. Since if you found me randomly on YouTube, you're probably like, who is this guy who's talking about Airbnb when he doesn't do anything Airbnb? Well, that is actually false i actually started airbnb with my girlfriend last year of 2021 in november and in 2022 we've scaled up to have five airbnbs and the goal of next year is to have at least 10 more airbnbs it could be chicago florida bay area and new york so with that being said i do have a little bit of experience with airbnb so i'm going to show you guys how we run our airbnbs still have a super host rating and have pretty much really good reviews with all our places so let's get start off with number one which is going to be set budget and vision yes that is right with anything going on with renovating or furnishing you need to have a budget and a vision of what you want especially if you're not going to hire a interior designer to do your interior designing so number one that we've established and we've learned from doing our airbnbs is that one bed one bath with a kitchen and everything just like an apartment is going to cost you about five to seven thousand dollars on the average and each bedroom you're gonna have to add about two thousand dollars or more so if you have about two bed one bath that's gonna cost you guys around seven to nine thousand dollars where you're gonna get good furniture that will last you forever it's to the point where we haven't even changed any of our furniture for the whole year because all our furniture is wiped down cleanly has not been broken if it has been broken it's been able to be even repaired and there hasn't been any problems with furniture so Number one, yes, make sure you have a budget. And number two, you want to have a theme or aesthetic in mind with all your properties before you start even buying any single furniture. Yes, you can go crazy hard on buying furniture and this and that, but before you do, you want to have a theme. You don't want to do something where it's industrial and then you want to buy mid-century furniture and then you want to go and like vintage furniture you don't want to mesh all these up even though it may look wickedly cool you want to have a set theme because you want to understand these people who are coming in now imagine if you went to a hotel and they had like mixed match furniture let's say they had like stainless steel like stainless steel table with like wood accent pieces on the side and like all this crazy stuff with like colors and this and that they're gonna probably not wanna book your place, especially a hotel, so you wanna keep it all a same theme. And another way where you can sort of get this is by knowing where your target location is going to be. Number one, if you're in like a business sector, let's say you're in downtown or you're in midtown of some type of big city, 
then you're probably gonna get guests who are on, a little bit on the higher end trying to stay for business or trying to go for a convention and you don't you want to match their aesthetics which is going to be more professional settings where you're going to have more quality over quantity of furniture and especially you don't want these guests to come and text you saying hey i think you're bed is broken or stuff because you know they're paying for a higher price for the location so you better provide a very good furniture quality to them now also know your audience and sort of know the location of where you are now i talked about midtown downtown area but let's say you're in orlando right if you're in orlando and you're very close to say disney or universal then you're probably going to look for families who are coming to spend vacation time to go to these places. That doesn't mean put all deck on like Disney stuff all over the whole unit or your place, but maybe have select rooms where it could be a kid's room that's selected to be maybe our Star Wars theme or any themes like that. That way it's more forgiving and you know kids might like that more over than just having what parents have and you definitely don't want to go ham on the master bedroom with star wars stuff because you're doing a small niche when you can have a bigger audience for that place all right so so now that we talked about budget and vision let's go on to number two which is going to be shop online yes as much as you guys want to save money and go on the route of going to facebook marketplace or going into wholesale stores Shop online, and I'm gonna show you guys why. Number one, yes, online furniture shopping might be a little bit more expensive because obviously you're gonna have to pay for shipping and just more overhead costs for the business. But number one, you're gonna have to spend a little bit extra for quality. The reason why is for our whole year that we've done Airbnb, we've had quality furniture to the point that no one has complained about our furniture and no one has broken our furniture because everything is sort of metal bracketed with wood over or something like that where it's quality, not quantity and cheap. So yes, spend a little bit money and go on online. But on top of that, the reason why you want an online shop is because one, you can order with a business account. Now, why a business account is super important is because think about this. When you buy a Airbnb or a rental property, you already have to spend 20, 20% down and your closing costs about three to 5%. You don't want to pay another top of the furnishing fee. So what you can do with the business account, especially with like Wayfair or Amazon, you can do something called a net 30 or a net 60 uh, payment plan. So basically what you do is you buy all your furniture and for the next 30 days, you don't even have to pay for the furniture. So your guests that you have for those 30 days that you start your Airbnb are technically going to be the ones that pay for your furniture. That way you don't have to pay out of pocket of the furniture costs that you pay. This is a great way to start your Airbnb and start scaling so you don't have to be all reserved in the cash and you can start your next, next, next adventure of another Airbnb. Now, another perk that you get with online shopping, especially with like Wayfair and Amazon, is that obviously you can get online discounts. And if you know Amazon, they do have a use section where they do discount a little bit like 10 to 30 or even 40 percent on certain certain furnitures. So those are great ways that you can get online discounts. Another one that's also great is especially with Wayfair, you have something called your personal assistant on Wayfair business account. So when you have a list of everything that you need to purchase, this is, a, this is a guide that will work with you. So you'll call them up and you'll say, hey, I have all this in my cart. Do you guys have any discounts that you guys can offer? This guy will look for all the furniture discounts that he can give you. That way you can get a great deal on your furniture. And so I have him on speed dial on my phone where I, if I have a furniture that I need to purchase, I give him a call and say, hey, I need a delivery by, you know, when or so, or I need some discounts. Can you help? and he always does a great thing. So customer service is always great if you are using Wayfair and you can get a cheaper price than going out to, let's say a wholesale and having to ship all this and that. And everything is just a less hassle. So with that being said, when you do shop online, yes, you're gonna get boxes and boxes of furniture. So make sure you guys outsource and you really don't wanna spend your time sitting for a whole day doing these furnitures when you can start making more money on doing other things. So outsource these by using TaskRack and Thumbtack so they can start doing your furniture building by the time you get in there and everything is ready to go. All right, with that being said, let's go on to the third one, which is going to be make it 
hop. This is so interesting because number one, Airbnb site has changed from previous where they would have a picture, a description, or your title, and then you have a rating. Now it's a little different. All they show you is photo and rating. So this is where photos are gonna be super, super, super important. This is where you need to be all your competitors. Picture is so, so much more important now on Airbnb. So make it pop and stand. Have bold color accents. This can be wallpapers, pillows, backsplash, anything like that. But usually if you're gonna do a more luxury high-end place, do wallpaper that sticks with these clientels. That way they know exactly what they're getting into. Have a welcome table with the check-in and check-out information, all the information. That way they don't have to constantly text you. You have it right there for the guests come in and to the point where they know exactly what to do when they get into your place. And number three, have a customized sign with a personal touch. With all our Airbnbs, we always put the guest's name and welcome to our place. So if our guest name is Bob, we always do welcome Bob to our place. That way Bob knows that this is his place for the rest of his night and that this place has been cleaned for Bob. So make it pop make it interesting make that place as fancy as possible that way people on airbnb when they scroll yours is the one that shows and they want to book your place all right now that we talked about making it pop let's go on to the fourth one which is going to be focus on lighting focusing on lighting is super important not only for photos but here's the thing i have a motto where anything i do Lighting is super important. Lighting makes or breaks a place. Have you ever been to a fancy restaurant and had all these fancy fixtures? Those are the first things that you look. You don't look at the table and go, oh, that is oak, natural white oak that is from like New Jersey or from Florida. You look at the lighting and you go, wow, that lighting really shows and pops. So lighting is super important with any property you have. And even with anything you do, don't underestimate the power of lighting. That makes or breaks the place, especially for mood settings and also having a place where people want to go. Mood is and light is so essential. So if you have windows, make sure you have large windows so that window captures it into the mirror and the mirror shines back and makes that place pop like, wow, this is an open airy place. On top of that, if you have elevated space, let's say you have 20 foot ceilings, put some good fixtures on those 20 foot ceilings because that's going to be that centerpiece where everyone's going to come in and go holy crap that is so amazing so make sure you guys have pendant lights structure shape style anything like that where it makes it look modern and cozy to the point that they want that in their own home all right now that we talked about lighting let's go on to the last and fifth one which is going to be comfort and cleanliness this is going to be your last super important thing but comfort is the top priority of any place. Hotels know their guests and Airbnb people know their guests. Guests don't wanna go in to a place where it's not comfortable. They're coming from a three hour flight or five hour flight or five hour drive. All they want is comfort and cleanliness. They don't want to have to deal with hassles of having to clean or having to know that it's dirty. So give them everything about comfort because it is a state. It doesn't matter if it looks great, but if it's uncomfortable, right? So make sure it's comfy and functional. Keep it all white. Make sure the guests know that it's clean. White is something that you can notice and if there's a speck of dust, they can see it. So get white furniture or stuff that will pop to the point that they know that this place is cleaned and it knows that it's comfy. And also going back to the first tip, get furniture that is easy to clean. This is something that I have an issue with is a lot of people like velvet because it's that luxury high end piece where it's like, ooh, cozy. But do you know how much of a hassle it is to clean velvet furniture? Like the stains will harden on these velvet things and you're gonna have to constantly replace. Instead of getting velvet, get leather or get synthetic leather where you can just wipe it off and just spray and washcloth. It's gonna be so much simpler for your cleaners and you won't have and you will save more money in the long run with your wallet since you don't have to constantly replace, even though you are paying a little bit of premium to get these leather or synthetic leather pieces. But overall, keep it comfortable and something where it's cleanly to the point where it's comfortable for the eyes, comfortable for their minds, and comfortable for their heads to sleep on at night. All right, with that being said, 
those are your five tips on how to furnish your Airbnb and get super host ratings and have a great stay for all your guests. Now, number one, which is super important before you start anything Airbnb, set vision and a budget. I can't strongly stress this. Setting a budget and a vision is where you're going to sort of, sort of budget on expensive pieces and small pieces where you can cheap down a little bit. So make sure you set a budget. Shop online. This is going to be your greatest asset, especially if you're doing Airbnb. Outsource to Thumbtack or TaskRabbit so they can build your furniture. And number number five, comfort and comfortability. Comfort and cleanliness is really important, especially since you are doing a hosting services for guests. So with that being said, guys, I hope you guys got some interesting information for you to start furnishing your Airbnb. If you have any questions when you do furnish your Airbnb, leave in the comment section below so I can help you guys out for the future. With that being said, if you guys thought this was informative or you just like the style of the content or you want to support me, make sure you guys like and subscribe to this video. And with that being said, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or if your day just ended, well, I hope you have a great night and I'll see you guys in the next video.